I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. <laughs> They fly now? They fly now! There's quite a lot of controversy when it comes to Mulan 2020, but in order for you to understand these controversies, I have to provide some context. So I'm going to simplify in the quickest way possible the Xinjiang conflict for those that may not be aware. I encourage everyone to do their own research because there's a lot to this. But basically, there's a conflict between the Uyghur people and the Han Chinese. From the 1950s to the 1970s, the Chinese government sponsored a mass migration of Han Chinese to the Uyghur region of Xinjiang and introduced a number of policies to suppress the cultural identity and religion of the Uyghur people. In July 2009, riots broke out in Xinjiang in response to a violent dispute between Uyghur and Han Chinese workers in a factory that resulted in over 100 deaths. In May 2014, China launched the Strike Hard campaign against violent terrorism in Xinjiang. Since then, there has been a massive campaign of ethno-religious repression carried out by the Chinese government. The CCP justifies their human rights violations by labeling them counter-terrorism. Many believe that the Chinese government consistently misuses counter-terrorism as a pretext for cultural suppression and human rights abuses. Reports suggest that Chinese people have destroyed one-third of all Muslim mosques in the region. The education systems throughout Xinjiang are now dominated mostly by the Chinese. Uyghur students are being sent to residential schools far from their home communities where they are able to speak their language. The Chinese are destroying Uyghur graveyards and digging up their dead and relocating them in an attempt to eradicate their history. They're forcing the Uyghur to remove clothing that represents their culture. They're harvesting thousands of human organs from these people. They're keeping Uyghurs in internment camps located in Xinjiang, where they torture, brainwash, sterilize, and force labor upon these people. But of course, China denies all wrongdoing. Now you may be wondering what any of this has to do with Mulan 2020. Well, they filmed the movie in Xinjiang, near some Uyghur concentration camps. And in the credits, they openly thank a CCP agency tasked with administering the camps. Now that is fucked up, even for do anything for money, Disney. If that wasn't enough for you, well, there's more. The lead actress, Liu Yifei, that plays Mulan, voiced support for the Hong Kong police on social media during the height of last year's pro-democracy protests in the city. She posted, I support the Hong Kong police. You can all attack me now. What a shame for Hong Kong. So it's not great knowing that she's pro-police brutality and anti-democracy. Anything to serve the great Winnie the Pooh, right? <laughs> People around the world are trying to boycott Mulan 2020 because of these reasons, and it's hard to blame them. In 1998, when Disney released the cartoon Mulan, Chinese audiences found the character Mushu to be kind of insulting, and when Mulan cut her hair to pass as a male, that didn't make much sense to the Chinese audience because it wasn't very uncommon for men to have long hair. The 2020 remake tries to rectify these mistakes, and despite Disney doing away with Mushu and the hair cutting scene, the film still faced backlash. They tried to make this movie as marketable to China as possible, only to have the Chinese audience denounce the film. On top of that, the Chinese government ordered all media to stop covering Mulan, Disney charged people $30 to watch it at home, and it made only $23 million in China on its opening weekend, and only $7.5 million in the US. And with a budget of $200 million, you know that has to sting. Cause you know Disney and money. They love their money. <laughs> Can you imagine how upset Disney must have been? Maybe now we'll stop seeing soulless remakes of classic cartoons. There's still time to save Moana, guys. And yes, I have seen the new Mulan. But don't worry, I wasn't about to pay $30 to see it. I used my friend's Disney Plus account, so they're to blame, not me. <laughs> I'll be covering most of the film in this video and doing my absolute best not to get copyright claimed by Disney, if that's even possible. Before I go ahead and talk about Mulan 2020, I'd like to recommend an actually good live action Mulan film. And that's the 2009 movie Mulan Rise of a Warrior. It feels so much more authentic than Disney's 2020 film. It's a grounded in reality version of Mulan that is inspired heavily by Mulan's origins. This is a much darker movie in tone than the Mulan that we're used to. Mulan is plagued by the horrors of war and losing fellow soldiers and friends. She becomes a renowned general in the movie. It's a very emotional movie. It's not as 
less kid-friendly. It's a brutal and sad war movie with lots of death and defeat, but I loved it because Mulan felt like a real flesh and blood character. It felt like she easily could have been a real person. So yeah, go watch that movie if you haven't. It's much better than Mulan 2020. Okay, I guess now it's time to talk about Mulan 2020. Yay. <laughs> I loved Mulan as a kid. It made me laugh, cry, sing. I kind of put Mulan as one of my favorite childhood movies. I love the themes, I love the characters. So hearing that there was going to be a remake, I was pessimistically intrigued. After watching it, I am astounded at how bad it was. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? There were two scenes in this movie that kind of brought back the magic in a very subtle way, but the rest of it was just garbage. I didn't have high hopes for this movie to begin with because of all the other remakes that were mostly awful, and it seems I was right. This movie does something a little bit different and starts when Mulan is a child. It kind of portrays her as an unruly kid. She performs a crazy stunt off of a roof while chasing a chicken. In this movie, Mushu is replaced with a phoenix, but the phoenix isn't really a character. It's more of a guide. It's more of a symbol. It's not a guardian. It's not comical relief like in the original. It's supposed to be like a symbol of her letting go of her false identity, which would be fine, I guess, on its own, but they almost completely do away with comical relief, which was such a huge staple in the original Mulan. Mulan originally fought against Roran invaders instead of the Huns, which is an inaccuracy that Disney corrected for the new version of the movie. One of the only things that they corrected. <laughs> So these Rorans are introduced as these warriors in black, like they're basically desert goths, and they can run up walls. Yeah, it's so dumb. How can they do this? With their chi, I guess? I almost wanted to give the movie the benefit of the doubt and say like they had like spiked boots or something. <laughs> Granted, there are some silly scenes in the cartoon, but then again, it's easier to suspend your disbelief with cartoons. I find this part where they run up the walls so silly because even in the cartoon, they use grappling hooks to climb a wall. And that's not all. When they're approaching the city, Bori Khan, uh, the character that replaces Sean Yu in this movie, he catches an arrow mid-flight that's about to hit him. Like, oh my God, this guy, he's, he's so fast and powerful. He's got a lot of chi. When you make chi into like a superpower, it kind of dilutes a lot of people's accomplishments, especially Mulan's. Mulan's supposed to be an exceptional warrior, not because she has a superpower, but because she's really skilled. It's not like just some random natural talent that she got from birth. That's what they're making it seem like in this new film. It's almost as if Disney thought a woman fighting amongst men was too unrealistic, so they gave her a superpower. Remember in the cartoon how Sean Yu had an eagle? Well, Bori Khan has an eagle too, except this eagle is a witch. Yeah, you heard that right. The Emperor's voice in the remake doesn't sound natural at all. We'll destroy this roaring army and the witch. It's very rough and coarse, like he's trying to put on this voice to sound powerful. In the animation, the emperor is a proud yet wise and peaceful old man. A single grain of rice can tip the scale. In the remake, he's narcissistic, merciless, and a wizard? The matchmaker scene is okay, I guess. And there isn't any breathing time. The Imperial Army recruiters arrive at the village immediately after the matchmaking scene. There should have been a scene of Mulan mulling over her failure at the matchmaking. Maybe her father could give her some words of advice. And then you hear the drums of the recruiters coming. The father's acting in the remake is pretty good. I think he sold the role pretty well. The scene of Mulan donning her father's armor and leaving in the middle of the night is executed so so much better in the cartoon. The music is better, the scene of her cutting her hair after looking at a reflection in the sword. I know it doesn't make a lot of sense historically, but it was still a great method to convey her transformation into a male soldier. You watched as she put her comb down as a message to her father before leaving, and her father doesn't find out the next day. He's woken up by the grandmother. The father then races after her, but because of his leg, he trips in the mud. Then you see the comb fall as the gates swing open and close with the wind. It's such a great scene. In the remake, she just like puts on the armor and awkwardly struts out. The lucky cricket from the cartoon is replaced with a soldier named Cricket, 
and his character is extremely irrelevant. Yeah, he plays practically no part in the movie. The goofy cast of characters from the cartoon are all replaced with bland, flavorless soldiers. Remember Yao, the short, stocky, arrogant, and big-jawed tough guy with a black eye? And Poe, the friendly, gentle giant? And Ling, the goofy, fun-loving string bean? Yeah, well, you can... Just replace them with these random dudes. There's a couple times when you can tell they're trying to be unique characters, but it's pretty much impossible to pick one out from the rest. The climbing pole challenge from the cartoon is replaced with a mountain that they have to climb while holding out two large buckets filled with water. I don't like this change because it has less to do with ingenuity than it does with strength or endurance. But I guess Mulan in this movie has her superpowered chi that she can use to climb a mountain and hold water better than men. <laughs> so stupid. Mulan in the cartoon wasn't stronger than men. She was just smarter. For whatever reason, they gave Mulan like brute strength in this movie and it's so weird. And since most men would naturally be stronger than Mulan, the climbing up the mountain means less and it makes less sense. The love interest in the remake is not Li Shang. Instead, it's a random soldier. This new character is not interesting at all. They didn't try to develop him in any way. He doesn't have any struggles. There's nothing he has to overcome. He's just a guy that exists to be a love interest for Mulan. That's it. In the cartoon, Li Shang was out to prove himself to his father. He was a newly appointed captain. And then he finds out that his father dies, which makes Mulan sympathize with his loss. She sees how a man is expected to swallow their grief instead of express their feelings in the face of great tragedy. Mulan grows to respect him and his struggles. Oh no, it's a good thing they removed Li Shang, because including him would be weird, right? It would be distasteful. I can't believe a producer actually admitted that they removed Li Shang, because having a commander that is also a sexual love interest was very uncomfortable. So you're telling me this made them uncomfortable, but a woman falling in love with a beast is okay? <laughs> And Li Shang helps the Me Too movement. He starts off sexist because of the culture, but then later changes he learns that he was wrong. It's called character development. By removing Li Shang, you removed LGBT representation, substituted him with a less effective character, and used the Me Too movement as a cover-up as to why he wasn't in the movie, which is very strange because Li Shang doesn't take advantage of Mulan at any time throughout the film. And their relationship doesn't even truly begin until after the war when Mulan is no longer in the military. So it just doesn't make sense from any angle. <laughs> in the remake, Mulan has nothing to prove to this random soldier. He's just a guy. Like, oh, hey, what's up, random dude? She doesn't have any real reason to respect him any more than any other person. I mean, yeah, he's nice to her, but the other Goonie characters are nice to her too. So she could fall in love with any of them just as easily as him. What, because he's more attractive? Is that how deep we're going with this movie? <laughs> he's the attractive one. <laughs> And there's so little chemistry between them throughout the entire runtime of the movie. It's almost as if they would have been better off just removing a love interest altogether. The captain in the remake says this. Four ounces can move a thousand pounds. Which is weird, right? Using an American weight system. <laughs> Especially during the Han Dynasty. Like pounds and ounces, they weren't a thing. He should have said like a grain of sand can move a boulder. A single grain of rice can tip the scale. One man may be the difference between victory and defeat. Four ounces can move a thousand pounds. Are you serious? I'm not sure what the editors were doing in this movie, but I don't think it was ready to be released. <laughs> there were some scenes where the backdrop looked so fake that I almost thought I was watching like a Broadway show. During the scene when the Rorans face off against the Imperial soldiers, Mulan is part of a flank group. So they're all on horses and they're chasing after this other group of Rorans. The Rorans are shooting arrows at them and all but two Imperial soldiers remain in the flank group. So they retreat. Mulan, on the other hand, is a complete dumbass and decides to keep running after them, despite the fact that she's extremely outnumbered. Like, I get you have this superpower now, but I don't think that's gonna save you. But luckily, the fog saved her instead. The Rorans just kind of vanish, and she's lost now, just stumbling along this random area until the witch pops out of nowhere and they start fighting. Mulan was kind of reckless in the cartoon, but only when she saw an advantage. In this movie, she's just 
an idiot. The witch knows that she's a woman somehow. I guess she can smell her vagina with her witch powers. And she throws a shuriken at Mulan. It hits her right in the tits and it sends her flying. Except the wrap thing she was using to cover her boobs, yeah, it saved her life. So I guess ironically, pretending to be a guy saved her life. So that's interesting. But yeah, I guess this scene's all about embracing your womanhood. So she takes off all of her armor, puts her hair down, gets on the horse and rides into battle. I guess maybe removing her armor would make her more nimble, you know? Maybe allowing her to uh, bounce around easier. But why put your hair down? It's so stupid. There's literally no tactical advantage to putting her hair down. In fact, it's a detriment. Enemy soldiers can grab grab her by her hair, and it will get in her face, blocking her vision. She will perform worse with her hair down. But I guess now she unlocked all of her superpowers. It was restrained due to the lie. I think the woman empowerment theme in the original cartoon was more than serviceable. You didn't have to introduce this super chi thing that she unlocks by embracing who she really is. And they keep repeating these three virtues in this movie, loyal, brave, and true. Loyal, brave, true. But she didn't unlock all three perks, right? It's a video game and she has to unlock all three perks and she couldn't unlock the true perk because she wasn't being true to herself. Loyal, brave, brave. brave. true. It wasn't until she put her hair down and took her armor off <laughs> that she was being true to herself and she unlocked all three perks so she became you know superhuman well more superhuman she was already superhuman before but now she's like super superhuman remember the avalanche scene from the cartoon yeah well they do it a little bit differently here so the witch is using her bird spell to keep the imperial army busy they're all huddled up in these shield wall like formations little do they know the roarins had set up a trebuchet and <laughs> And it's the perfect distance to hit these uh, little formations of shield wall. And so they fire the trebuchet at the soldiers. And miraculously, it hits them. Wow. I'm very impressed. These things are made for like siege battles against castles when you can't really miss. <laughs> They're not supposed to be used against ground troops. And when were they setting this thing up? When they were fighting? Like what? Oh my God, I don't, I just, it's so dumb. It's unbelievably stupid. So Mulan, she decides to gather a bunch of helmets and ride behind the Roaring troops. How she did this without them noticing her, who knows? I mean, she's wearing bright red. So it's hard to miss her, but I guess the Roaring troops are blind and she hides behind them, right? She sets up all of the helmets to, to like trick them into thinking that a bunch of troops somehow got behind them without them knowing. So she starts firing on them with her bow and she takes out a few of their troops and they're freaked out. So they turn the trebuchet <laughs> to fire on <laughs> Mulan. I mean, they can't even see any troops. They just see like a couple helmets laying on rocks, but I guess this was enough to convince them that they had to turn the trebuchet. Like forget the formations down below that are definitely more of a threat. Let's turn the trebuchet and fire directly at the mountain when they know it won't hit them. They just fire it just because, I don't know, just cause? <laughs> just fire the trebuchet. <laughs> So obviously this causes an avalanche. And surprisingly Mulan, who's up on the mountain, is able to outrun the avalanche. Oh, that's right. The horse was hidden in this little like nook. <laughs> it was there perfectly so she could run and jump onto it and scurry away. What a perfect horse she has. Mulan like miraculously saves this random soldier boyfriend that she has by riding through the snow with the horse. They made riding through the snow look more treacherous in the cartoon. So then Mulan continues her idiotic streak and decides to out herself to the rest of the soldiers. She could have just put her hair back up and covered her tits, like just cross your arms or something. You know, hide those babies. They do it so much better in the cartoon. Mulan doesn't out herself because of some suicidal need to express her womanhood and unlock her lady chi. In the cartoon, 
when she's injured and she passes out from the pain. Li Shang has a healer mend her wounds, and this is when Li Shang finds out that she's a woman. In the remake, she's just like, yeah, just kill me, please. I'm done pretending. Expulsion. I would rather be executed. Excuse me, what? In the cartoon, Mulan is left behind, and this is when she finds out that the Huns weren't all eliminated by the avalanche, and she feels it's her duty to inform Li Shang. In the remake, the witch just randomly comes out of nowhere, and she's like, you gotta join me because you're a lady and I'm a lady and we're both dealing with the same issues here. And for whatever reason, she decides to tell Mulan about the Rorans invading the Imperial City. The coward who are taking the Imperial City and you had well for. And at this point, she's still loyal to the Rorans. So I'm not really sure why she did that. <laughs> Personally, I think the witch's inclusion dilutes Mulan's own struggles because it introduces another character that we have to sympathize with for the same exact reason. She knows who her master is. I know one of the main themes of Mulan is woman empowerment, but she was doing that perfectly well on her own. You don't have to introduce this random witch that's being bullied by the Rorans. In the cartoon, Mushu is on a quest to prove himself to the other ancestors, but it doesn't diminish Mulan's struggle as a woman because they're trying to prove themselves for different reasons. Li Shang wanted to prove himself to his father, but then he finds out that his father has passed away. So it's up to him to fill his father's shoes, so to speak. You see, all these characters have their own paths that they're taking, their own internal struggles. With this witch character, it just feels like they copy and pasted a less interesting version of Mulan. There is an element here where the witch kind of relates to Mulan and that helps the plot move forward, but she's not a strong character on her own. And I found it very hard to sympathize with her because throughout the movie, she's killing innocent people and posing as them. And yeah, she's kind of an evil bitch. So I'm sorry if I'm not like shedding a tear for this woman. So Mulan informs her regiment of Bori Khan's plan to infiltrate the Imperial City. Her comrades believe her and convince the commander that what she says is true. So they travel there together. The witch kills the emperor's chancellor and impersonates him to get the emperor to expose himself in a vulnerable position with the Khan. When ambushed, the emperor uses chi magic to fend off the enemy. He becomes a fabric bender. And I wish I was joking. <laughs> It's so stupid. So the Rorans take out every single one of the Emperor's guards. But instead of littering him with arrows, they decide to shoot a bunch of ropes around him and then like twist the ropes to capture him. <laughs> when the plan was to kill him. But I guess Bori Khan wanted to do it himself in like this self-aggrandizing way. It's so stupid. In an attempt to retrieve the Emperor, Mulan finds the witch on the Emperor's throne. It takes like two seconds for Mulan to convince her to betray Bori Khan, so she does. She turns into an eagle and flies away and leads Mulan straight to him. The witch then sacrifices herself by flying directly into an arrow that Bori Khan shoots at Mulan. So yeah, the witch is dead now, so I don't care. Like, the movie wants me to care, I just don't. I'm not sure how an eagle can outfly an arrow. I guess it's her magic. It's always the magic, right? Mulan reaches Bori Khan, and she's able to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. During the fight, Mulan accidentally loses her sword by dropping it into a vat of lava that is conveniently placed right below them. And it's not like a big vat or anything. It's like a little tiny one, and the sword just happened to slide right in there, so yeah. That sucks. And then the Emperor's like, rise up like the Phoenix and defeat him. Rise up like a Phoenix. Even though the Emperor has no idea that the Phoenix has any sort of significance with Mulan, but I guess he just conveniently mentioned the same exact thing that her father was talking about back home. So, cool how things work out that way. And so this Phoenix comes out of nowhere <laughs> and she rises up and you know, it shows the wings are like coming out of Mulan. It's very powerful, very powerful scene. It kind of reminded me of that Daenerys scene from Game of Thrones. <laughs> if they're not taught in film school, I swear to God, they're not doing it right. Mulan jumps on this wooden beam that's being suspended by just a rope in the center. I'm not sure how she was planning on staying on there, but Bori Khan helps her out by jumping on it too. So the weight equalizes. Yeah, so that was nice of him. I'm not sure why I didn't just watch her fall. <laughs> 
But yeah, Mulan does her fancy moves and Bori Khan falls, but he doesn't die. He's just laying there. Mulan frees one of the Emperor's hands and Bori Khan secretly shoots an arrow at the Emperor. But the Emperor is too quick. He catches the arrow. <laughs> and he throws it in the air. This is when Mulan jumps in the air and kicks the arrow <laughs> with her super chi legs and <laughs> and the arrow goes flying into Borikon. But he's not fast enough because obviously Mulan can kick an arrow faster than a bow can shoot it because that makes sense. And yeah, so it kills Borikon. She kicks the arrow into him. <laughs> I can't believe this exists. In the cartoon, Mulan defeats Shan Yu after losing her sword by using an instrument typically meant for women, a decorative fan. Technically, Mushu is the one that defeated Shan Yu, you know, by shooting him with a firework <laughs> that sends him into a tower full of fireworks, literally blowing him up. <laughs> kind of brutal if you think about it. Mulan's friends in the cartoon dress up as women in order to catch Shan Yu's men off guard, which was a great contrast to Mulan pretending to be a man earlier in the movie, as well as being very comical in nature. Guess what her friends get to do in the remake? Yeah, they just fight off a bunch of random goons. Her friends have absolutely no substance or character in this movie. It's sad. The iconic music from the cartoon is replaced with instrumentals, which I would be okay with if the rest of the movie was good, but it's not. In the cartoon when the Emperor is saved, he recounts all of Mulan's misdeeds before bamboozling us and thanking her for saving the kingdom and bowing to her. The greatest honor anyone could hope to achieve. It's followed by all the Emperor's subjects and all of the people in Imperial City bowing to Mulan. It's a very powerful moment. In the remake, the Emperor is struggling to read his lines. I invite you to take your place with our greatest decorated warriors. So yeah, he thanks Mulan and offers her a place in his guard. Mulan refuses the Emperor's wishes in favor of her family. There's a pointless and emotionless scene with her love interest on a bridge. The set during the scene kind of looks like a theme park. It doesn't look realistic at all. When she returned to her father, that scene was okay. In the cartoon, this moment holds more weight because Mulan expects her father to be very upset with her. So she brings him gifts because she knows how much honor means to him. She's desperate for him to accept Accept her back despite what she's done to dishonor the family. Her father pushes the gifts aside, telling her that the greatest gift is having her as a daughter. I think this is one of the most powerful scenes in all of Disney's cinematic history. The cartoon ends with Shang visiting Mulan and asking her to dinner, and Mushu finally being accepted as a guardian spirit. It wrapped up everything perfectly. Instead of coming home with gifts, in the remake, the Emperor's guard and the commander show up and they give her a new sword. And guess what guys, the sword has a new perk that that she unlocked. It's the family perk. So she's even stronger. She's like a super, super, super chi lady. So yeah, I think the remake was trying to be too many things at once and failing at everything simultaneously. It's kind of sad when the Chancellor Shifu from the cartoon had more personality and character than mostly everybody in the remake. I get that animation is kind of tough to transfer into live action, but still, they could have done so much better than this. The remake felt very rushed, the pacing was all off. Granted in the cartoon they had the benefit of being partially a musical, but there are ways to convey emotion with a character in live action without singing. There were like a couple scenes here and there that lasted like two seconds, but for most of the movie it was like, all right, scene, 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 let's get this over with, come on. <laughs> they almost completely did away with comedy in the remake, which I would be fine with if the other qualities of the film were done well, but they weren't. So it just makes the original cartoon seem that much better. I love the comical spark that Mushu provided as an inept guardian and guide for Milan, but they just failed to replace that with anything fun in this remake. This movie is just void of life, it feels like. It's a dead movie. I have no desire to watch it again. And that's sad coming from someone who loved the original. I'm gonna make a bold claim and say Mulan 2 was better than this movie. <laughs> Please make sure to head over to AlienClothing.com if you get a chance. We're working with a new printing company and everything is much higher quality over there. We're also selling with Zoomies Canada, which is awesome. Everything is limited stock, so if you want something, you should get it quickly. And yeah, I guess that'll do it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take a walk down the pier.
It's kind of bittersweet, and we'll still miss it here. It burned to the ground after things went south. I guess it represents how things turned out. Now I'm leaving this house. Not out of my choice, but out of shit, out of what's yet to come. And why do you need it so much? It's just a matter of waiting this one out.